Hi there. Welcome to today's podcast. I'm your host, KJ Ajayi. By God's grace, we'll continue on the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. We have seen his personality and a number of things came out to us. Number one, the Holy Spirit has a mind. He searches the human mind. He has a will. He forbids. He permits. He speaks. He loves. The Holy Spirit grieves and the Holy Spirit prays. Most of the times there have been instances where people argue as to whether the Holy Spirit is God or whether Jesus is God. But I'm not about to go into that. But suffice it to say that the Bible calls him the Spirit of God. And the Bible also tells us God is Spirit. So you and I need to understand that there is no argument as to the deity of the Holy Spirit. A man is one and same as a spirit. So the Holy Spirit is God. Now, it therefore implies that every attribute that is um, rightfully God's attribute is also rightfully the attribute of his spirit. So the first thing you and I need to know is that he is omnipresent, is everywhere. David said, where shall I go from your spirit or where shall I flee from your presence? Psalm 139 verse 7. In this psalm, David concludes it's impossible for him to escape from God's spirit. This was true, even if he ascended to the height or descended into the depths or traveled across the sea or surrounded himself with darkness. God is clearly revealing to us here that even in hell, a man cannot hide from the Holy Spirit were that to be the place where he sought refuge from the Holy Spirit. The Bible also tells us that the Holy Spirit is omniscient. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, it says, But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth, yea, all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of that man? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is all-knowing. That's what it means to be omniscient. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. What this implies is that he is all-powerful. We see that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. The Spirit of God moved upon the waters until the Spirit of God, the Word of God is not active where the Spirit of God is not permitted to move. Every time the word of God has come, the Holy Spirit have moved first. The Spirit and the word are in partnership. The word will not walk without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has nothing to walk without the word of God. That is very important. The Bible tells us also in Acts of Apostles chapter 5 verse 3 and verse 4 that the Bible calls him God. But Peter said to Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land while it remained? Was it not your own? After it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, thou hast lied unto God. Acts 5, 3 and 4. So I want you to see here that the Holy Spirit is God. And I'd like you to know that he is made equal with the Father and the Son. While the Holy Spirit is indeed, indeed occupies a place of submission in the Trinity, he is nevertheless one bit behind the Father and the Son. This is just his divine attribute. He is the most quiet and the seemingly more um, unseen part of the Trinity, but he is not lesser than the Father and the Son. And um, this is where I'm going to stop today. By God's grace, tomorrow we will continue on the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.